Happy holidays, trainers. I hope you all had fun with your family yesterday. We're just a few short days away from 2021. So to celebrate the end of the year, today we'll be going through the top 10 shinies that I've caught in 2020. So sit back, relax, and cue the intro, because we're starting right now. Hey everyone, I'm James, and welcome to today's episode. If you're new to the channel and you want to learn about tips and news for your favorite Pokemon games, then hit the subscribe button down below to be notified when I release my newest videos. And much thanks if you do. So can you believe that 2020 is almost over? I think we can all agree that it's time we move on from this crazy whirlwind of a year. Despite everything that's happened, this year has been one of my best in Pokemon Go. I made lots of new friends, participated in more events, and caught more shinies than both 2018 and 2019 combined. Since January, I've caught 272 shiny Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Compared to previous years, in 2018 I got 80 shiny Pokemon, with most being from Community Day, and in 2019 I got 127. Looking back at my first shinies of the year, I was lucky enough to catch not one, but two shiny Heatran during a raid hour in January. I was raiding with a group of players at the Epcot theme park in Walt Disney World. Shout out to my Orlando Raids fam, I love and miss you guys. As for my most recent shiny, I caught an Alolan Sandshrew off an incense during the Mr. Mime event. This is only my first one, so I hope to catch another one during this event so I can complete the family. So for this list, I picked my top 10 shiny Pokemon that I had the best experiences with catching. Each one has a unique story behind it. Without further ado, let's get into it. Starting off the list at number 10, we have Shiny Darkrai. Darkrai was first released back in March during a special raid weekend. At the time, I had just finished my shift at Disney Springs and was heading towards the parking garage across the street. As I was leaving my backstage area, I opened my game to see a 5-star egg hatching close by at the Lego store in just a few minutes. Since it was on my way, I figured, why not, and stuck around to do the raid. As soon as the raid hatched, I proceeded to mash the join button until I jumped in the lobby. If you've ever played Pokemon Go at Disney Springs, you know that the raid lobbies always fill up in a matter of seconds once the raid starts. To make it in, you gotta be fast, and I'm talking Lightning McQueen fast. Anyways, I jumped in and we did the raid. I want to say it took about 30 seconds or so to take it down. Once Darkrai's HP hit zero, I started walking towards the exit. It was around dinner time on a Friday night, so a lot of traffic would be arriving soon. Once I got to the steps to the bridge of the garage, I reopened my game to catch Darkrai. At first, I didn't notice a difference in color, so I went to give it a golden raspberry as usual. As soon as I saw the shiny symbol above its name, I stopped in my tracks. This was the first time I had ever gotten a shiny on my first legendary raid. This was a great shiny to get early because you cannot trade mythical Pokemon in Pokemon Go. Plus, I had tons of candy saved from raiding Darkrai during the 2019 Halloween event, so I didn't have to worry about doing more. While I would have done a few more raids, I worked the rest of the weekend, so luckily, I didn't have to miss out on this brand new shiny. Moving on to number 9, we have Shiny Electrike. I caught this teal shiny the morning after I had my last shift at Disney Springs. I went down to the mail room in my apartment complex to get my mail from the past few days. As usual, I got lots of junk mail and circulars. Along with all the junk mail, I had received a special delivery as well. To my surprise, I opened my game and there in my mail room was the teal Electrike. I was especially surprised because this was my first random shiny encounter in almost a year. In March 2019, I found a shiny Rattata just before the Battle Showdown event that released shiny Machop and shiny Mankey. While the stats on this Electrite aren't the best, teal is one of my favorite colors so I was happy to get one regardless. A few days later, I would go on to catch my second Electrike, meaning that I completed the family in under a week with no event. How crazy is that? This would also be the beginning of my shiny streak that would continue throughout 2020. Up next at number 8, we have Shiny Seviper. I'm pretty sure that I picked up this 5km egg during GoFest, where Seviper and Zangoose were spawning worldwide. On July 31st, I was hatching all my eggs to make room for the Dragon Week event. I intended to hatch a ton of eggs that week to hopefully get a shiny Dino, but we all know how that turned out. 
Anyways, just after the event started, I drove to a nearby apartment complex to check a gibble that my friend reported. As I pulled into the spot where the gibble was hiding, my egg started to hatch. There was no shiny gibble, but you can imagine my excitement when I saw sparkles and a green snake pop out of my egg. Now if only I could be lucky enough to hatch a shiny zangoose from eggs. At number 7 on my list, I have my best shiny that I got from GoFest this summer, Shiny Heatmore. So during GoFest, I caught a shiny Alolan Executor, a Phoebus, a Machop, and two Swablu. I had already caught all these Pokemon previously, and the Swablu brought my total to 4 in my collection. But the one that really stuck out to me was when I went during the fire hour to a local IHOP by my apartment and found a shiny Heatmore in the parking lot. Shout out to my buddy Christian for coming with me. In my opinion, shiny Heatmore was one of the best shinies that was released during GoFest next to shiny Unknown and shiny Tangela. At number 6, we have shiny Flying Pikachu. Flying Pikachu was the featured costume Pokemon of the flying event in Pokemon Go's 4th anniversary. Each day of the event, you could take a screenshot and Flying Pikachu would photobomb your Pokemon. After the photobomb, you could attempt to catch the Flying Pikachu that spawned on your map. If it wasn't for the sparkles or the shiny symbol, I'm sure I would have missed it. Because funny enough, shiny Pikachu is just a slightly yellower variant of original Pikachu. This is also my first shiny costumed Pokemon, so naturally, it had to make it onto my list in some regard. At number 5, we have Shiny Rayquaza. Out of all the shiny legendary raid bosses I battled, this one in particular took the longest before I found a shiny. During the Dragon Week event, I teamed up with my friends Alan, Justin, Sandy, and my best friend Sebastian, and together we did a ton of Rayquaza raids. I think one of the days we went all around town doing 20 plus raids. Throughout the week, everyone was getting the rare black dragon, everyone except for me. It wasn't until the 57th raid that I finally got my shiny Rayquaza. Let me repeat that. 57 raids. To that, I just have to say, what the heck, Niantic? Regardless, it is still exciting to get one. Plus, during one of those raids, Sebastian got 100% Ray, and I consider that an absolute win. Even though my Rayquaza doesn't have the best stats, I'll treasure it for years to come. At number 4, we have Shiny Spiritomb. Spiritomb had its shiny release during the Halloween event this past October. This is a very rare Pokemon, as it was only available from field research tasks, and the special research, a spooky message unmasked. This was also the first time that you could get multiple Spiritombs during an event. Previously, you could only get one Spiritomb during the 2018 and 2019 Halloween events through a special research path. Every day of the event, I went to the local college campus in my town, which is littered with Pokestops. I scoured the campus, searching for the Catch-18 Ghost and Catch-18 Dark-type Pokemon, as well as Win-2 Raids quests. On the fourth day of the event, I picked up a Win-2 Raids quest and hit a couple Darkrai near the front of campus. To my surprise, I got a Shiny. I was so ecstatic about this one, because Spiritomb is a seasonal Shiny, meaning it's not going to be available until next Halloween. During next year's event, my guess is that Spiritomb will either end up in raids or in the wild during a Catch Mastery event, but only time will tell. At the number 3 spot on my list, we have Shiny Genesect. Shiny Genesect was released in August as part of the Unova Week event. Part of this event also took place on my birthday. Because the event started at 4pm, I didn't see any Genesect raids until later in the evening. While I was having my birthday dinner with my dad at Disney Springs, I was invited to a remote raid across Orlando. After completing the raid, I encountered a red Genesect, which I appropriately renamed Birthday Boy. What a great gift. At number 2, we have Shiny Riolu. This is one of the rarest Shinies in my collection. Shiny Riolu was released in February during the Sinnoh Celebration event alongside Hippopotas. The problem with Shiny Riolu during this event was that it was only available in 7 kilometer eggs. As I'm sure you know, these eggs can only be received in gifts from friends. With a 1 in 14 chance of hatching a Riolu, along with the 2% Shiny rate, you would have less than a 1% chance of hatching a Shiny Riolu during the event. Not great odds, right? Not to mention that this was predicted to get worse after the event, as Riolu would be moved back into 10 kilometer eggs. 
Now I had a bunch of incubators left over from the Christmas event, and because there wasn't anything I wanted out of eggs besides Gibble, I bit the bullet and hatched a ton of eggs. I didn't have much luck during the first few days of the event. A lot of the eggs I hatched were either Mantyke, Badoo, or Bonsley. I was running out of incubators and I was getting frustrated. On the final day of the event, I went to Epcot in Walt Disney World to walk around and hatch some eggs. At this time, I had gotten a few Gibble and Rialu from eggs, but none of them were shiny. As I was walking into the UK area, my last nine eggs began to hatch. As my third to last egg was hatching, I saw sparkles, and crazy enough, there was the shiny Rialu on my screen. I could not believe my eyes. I nearly screamed, but I had to contain myself, otherwise people would have thought I was crazy. But hey, with these kind of odds, it's like winning the lottery. Shiny Riolu was, and forever will be, my greatest shiny Pokemon that I hatched from an egg. So before I reveal my number one shiny of the year, I want to know what's the best shiny that you've caught in 2020. Let me know down in the comments. Hopefully we can keep that shiny look rolling as we enter 2021. Alright, we're at the final shiny on my list. My number one shiny Pokemon of 2020 is none other than... Actually, you know what? Instead of telling you, I'll just show you. Roll the tape. Can you believe it? Shiny Gibble. I was so ecstatic to finally get one for my collection. I obtained this one from the special research given to us during the US Grubhub event. I spent most of the event walking around the college campus where I caught the shiny spirit tomb. My shiny luck was pretty dry throughout the day, only finding a shiny Bulbasaur on incense. During the last 30 minutes of the event, I finished the exclusive research story. With only one encounter the whole event, and a 1 in 70 shiny chance according to the Sylph Road, I beat the odds and got that blue dragon shark. While the stats for the Gibble are decent, I will most likely save it for a reroll in a lucky trade, assuming I don't keep it as a trophy. Alright guys! That's going to be my top 10 shinies of 2020. But before we wrap things up for the year, I just want to say thank you to all of you for joining me on this adventure. This channel has really invigorated my love for making video content, and your support over the last few months has been fantastic, so I can't thank you guys enough. Even though 2020 is coming to an end, Togetips is just getting started. I have lots of cool stuff planned for next year, and I look forward to bringing you guys more great content. Also, before I forget, I'm giving away three Zerud codes for Pokemon Sword and Shield on my Instagram account. All the details were made in my last week's video, which I'll link right up here. The contest closes on the 31st, so you have a few more days to enter. I wish you all a fun and safe rest of the year, and here's to bigger and better things in 2021. So until next time, thank you so much for watching, I hope you have a great day, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.